Hello and welcome to another episode here on the Mall Under Management Channel. My name is KS Mall, and today we are watching the maps and themes, aka the feature highlights, episode 7 for City Skylines 2. If you've missed it, uh, City Skylines has been releasing a video every week where they are basically taking a look at the new features in City Skylines 2 so that people get a good idea on what's new. Because when City Skylines 2 was first announced, a lot of people were asking, hmm, is this really a new game? What's so different about this, right? Or if they are just doing the whole Sims thing where they're basically resetting everything to the beginning, you have to rebuy all the add-ons and then you didn't really get anything new and it was just a small reset for them making more money. And since they have been releasing those videos, we got a lot of ideas about what the hell is going on here. And so far, it looks like as if City Skylines 2 is becoming its own game with tons of new additions. If you want to see my previous reactions and deep dives, you can find them here on the channel. But with that said, let's jump right into it, shall we? I haven't seen this yet. So maps and themes. I mean, maps and it's easy themes to forget how much our day -to -day haven't been really that really important lives. in the game, let's be honest, the looks, in the first one. Feels and changes sets the scene for our lived experience. It's the okay. same for the people in your city. And in City Skylines 2, the world is a whole lot bigger. I will interrupt here very quickly. I, I, will, I will let it run and then we will jump through the important parts. But I see some people saying that City Skylines 2 looks a little bit less graphically appeasing than the first one. Like this looks like lower graphics. And yeah, maybe. But here's the thing. The performance of City Skylines 1 was so-so, to say the least, even if you had a really, really good system, right? And this is even bigger than the previous one. So if they have to tune it down a little bit to make it actually a smooth experience, even deep into the end game of City Skylines 2, uh, <laughs> sign me up, man. <laughs> like, I'm taking it. And it still looks good. Like, who is who is zooming in that close in City Skylines? Madman. Only man. Equivalent to 159 square kilometers. Wow. That's bigger than some countries. And that's a modded. Maps are composed of individual tiles. Connect them to create a sweeping mm -hmm. urban jungle. Or don't connect them to develop interesting little pockets of life. Oh! You can unlock 441 tiles that's on new. each map. But you'll have nine to work with when you begin your city building. Okay, nine maps. Each milestones to unlock more. When you do, okay. choose tiles. Okay, I had this from uh, the first one. Plans. Before you click, preview the total buildable area, what natural resources are available, and okay. the cost of that tile. The expanded map inspires you to think big, but remember to amazing. think up. What? Height limits have increased too, oh. freeing you to carve a city higher in the sky than ever before. Oh my god, can you make mountain Building cities? On this scale also invites you to think outside of oh, the that's box. Oh, that's awesome. Literally. Create connections to cities beyond the edge of your map to open up trade routes that can accelerate <laughs> the city's growth. Oh boy. Before you we have to map, talk about that. Look at where it sits on the globe. Is it north or south of the equator? And which hemisphere is it in? Oh. Check out how much of the map can be built on, which natural resources it has, and what, if any, connections already exist to neighboring cities. Huh. Found a map you like? Click and give your city a name. This is also your chance to change the default theme if you want to. There are okay. two themes, European and North American. Themes shape the look and feel of your city, from street markings to cop cars. The biggest difference is the architectural style of residential and commercial buildings. You I love that they're now putting this in naturally. Zoning your city. This lets and you I hope it makes a big European difference. In your North American city, and vice versa. Yeah, Still, awesome. The theme you choose dominates the appearance of your city. And then we will get, of course, uh, some map packs there are later. Ten maps in the base game, each drawing inspiration from real world. Like, like they have been doing with the first one. Recognize them, and with the vast area available on the new expanded map, damn the mountains are more varied, resources are more accessible, Ooh, and there are more ways nice to connect to other cities. You'll Sweet. discover maps where life is lived on the sandy beaches of a sprawling archipelago. 
maps that invite you to build at high altitudes with a mountainside map or along the winding waters of a rich river delta. There might even be a map that looks like the world outside your window. Hmm. Select the map that we will see a lot of mods to set this for that for to happen. And living yeah. In the city of your dreams. All right. I have to say this one was a bit... A little bit weaker. A little bit weaker from like new changes. Now, then again, what do you want to change so much, right? Making it bigger makes sense. Um, yes, there was like a mod and I think even some cheat options where you could just increase the amount of tiles you can utilize. But this looks already so much bigger, right? Now we have like multiple islands, uh, which should be pretty cool to utilize. And man, this, this city, by the way, looks amazing. I love this. What I found interesting, and they clearly showcased here, right? Like you are still connecting the tiles if you so desire, or you are completely deciding against it and you say you want to know what? No, I'm not doing that. The thing is though, how do you do that? Because you need a connection with a street to that point still, right? Like let's say you just want to create an area where there is some pocket life, as they call it. And you just say, this is for my uh, living area. I want that this is where, where the people live, right? And I only want to make it like super exclusive for some rich people or whatever. Um, but you, you still need outside connections and you cannot really get outside connections to this because you cannot build in those areas you haven't bought. And I'm, I'm kind of curious how, how they are doing this. Like... Everything you build in here, you cannot connect to your other cities and people cannot go there because there is no connection. So I wonder if that really works. But I like the idea. I think it I think it solves some previous issues that you always had those huge areas, right? Like it seems like now they have smaller fields, like you are unlocking a smaller area as it seems. But you have a lot of those because in in the first one right you are unlocking this huge new area and you just realize that 75 percent of the area you just unlocked was kind of useless for what you wanted to do and what you kind of wanted to achieve here like okay right and then you you don't have that problem anymore with this one because you can now just choose smaller tiles and then at some point you say okay you know what i am really curious about this area here in particular for an extra farm but this whole mountainous area doesn't doesn't interest me in any shape or form i will not buy that and that gives you more option also something i just noticed which is amazing and gives me a lot of hope when it comes to weather and when it comes to the climate is this Look at this. This area has snow. Don't forget, in City Skylands 1, there were basically two states. Snow map, no snow map. Those were the two states we got in the first one. And now it's just this, oh yeah, you are in a very high mountainous area. There's snow here. And then the rest of the area, there's not. Or maybe even when we have winter, we will see that half of the city is under snow while the other half of the city is not. That is amazing. And again, lets you really think about the planning you have to do with your city and what you want to do, right? To prepare them for certain weather conditions. I love that. Like again, this is, this is such an amazing new thing which you can now just do. And I want to see more of that. Then, oh gosh. Oh gosh. Um, I mean, we, we saw this, right? This is nothing new. Um, that you are now unlocking buildings like vegetable farming, EU mixed housing, NA mixed housing. You get a loan limit. Uh, you get new communications, which new development tree. Huh? Curious about that. I hope I haven't missed that yet. So this is still like the same thing in the first one. But, but uh, it seems like that here again, they have just more. Like in the, in the previous game, you had like, what was it? I, 
oh god, I don't want to say anything wrong because I definitely do not remember the number anymore. But you had like 10 levels of towns, right? You had like small village, large village, grand village, busy town, big town, large city, huge city, thriving metropolis. And that was basically it, right? And now it seems like they, they have those big milestones where something really, really big happens for your city. And then you have those smaller ones, which are still giving you something. And you don't have to wait that long anymore till you are unlocking something. Because that was also one of the one of the issues City Skylines 1 had. And why a lot of people just said, you know what? Give me just the whole tree unlocked. I don't want to wait. There are too many gaps in between. I don't like that. So I think this could be a great addition for the game and could help out with those gaps. But what I wanted to talk about is, okay, higher altitude. We will see how that actually plays. This, this, <laughs> you can now connect with other cities and probably your cities to get resources, to get electricity, to get people and Wow. <laughs> this is so ironic to me because if you don't know, this is what the Sims, uh, not the Sims, SimCity had. The last SimCity gate over a decade ago, which came out. Like one of their big aspects and where they kind of tried to sell you the always online function, which by the way, they admitted in a recent interview was purely DRM. They wanted to have something against piracy and they they basically concepted this whole system of you need to be permanently online. So you need like, um, like this is why we did all those connections and stuff. Like when you were reading the interview, uh, you, you kind of get the feeling, you know, why uh, sit, um, SimCity is just failed in the end. But... It is still ironic to me that now City Skylines 2 is like, yeah, you know what? The idea with connecting different cities and even cities you have helped building with each other is actually not a bad one. And we want that in our game. I, I find that so hilarious that they are also now going for this. And you know what? I kind of like the idea. I kind of like the idea that you can just connect with other cities and then you can get the stuff you need, especially because City Skylines 2 still doesn't need you to be always online, right? They're not trying to hide a devious uh, DRM system behind it, but they actually see the value in that feature and that they're actually now going for it is is pretty hilarious. Yeah. And I'm, I'm really curious how you can utilize it because we had previous maps where resources were just not that many available to you or sometimes were completely missing. So if you now need more resources, yes, adding resources from other cities or even electricity sometimes might be super useful, right? I'm really, really curious to see how that goes. Yeah. Um, then they talked about how the maps are available, which is like, yeah, okay, like we, we have seen this before, right? You have, still can have the unlimited money, you can still unlock all and so on and so forth. So that's neat. But I think this is the only thing they really talked about in this. Like those were the major, major takeaways, at least for me. Uh, if I've missed something super duper important. Please let me know down below in the comments. But yeah, this was all right. I'm I'm really curious to see if the difference in map will make a big difference this time. Like first in in City Skylands One, I always thought that like, oh my god, yeah, this map. Oh, the resources are different. Uh, the look of the map is completely different. I will probably play this very differently from what I usually do in my City Skylines playthroughs. And then after some time, I just realized, mm, no, not, not really that different. So I wonder if your map choice will actually make a difference this time. And I'm hoping for that. But with that said, we are at the end of the video. 
end of the deep dive we will of course be back next week again when this is happening so don't forget to leave a like and also subscribe to the mall under management channel if you haven't done so yet we are focusing solely on strategy games here on the channel so if you love strategy games of any shape or form and we're also doing reviews on strategy games when they are coming out you came to the right place like we are focusing on management games building games real-time strategy games turn-based strategy games like everything you can put basically into the category strategy games is what you are finding here in the channel because I have been playing strategy games since my childhood and I just love them to death so that's what we are doing here so thank you also to all the people who are already supporting the channel uh, this channel is still pretty young so yeah thank you for all the people who have been already subscribing commenting liking like thank you very much for that with that said stay safe and I'll see you next time bye bye